We're in a farmhouse kitchen today and we're talking about design tips, durability, and we're even throwing in a little building science. You know, the farmhouse style of a kitchen has become really popular over the last few years. And we're coming to you today from a farmhouse kitchen that's on a working farm. We're here at Springdale Farms. My clients, Paul and Glenn, built this house with my company five years ago with local architecture firm, Rouser Design. The architects did a fantastic job of meeting a very iconic style, but also making it really work for these owners. You know, this kitchen has seen a lot of celebrity chefs locally. We're on an urban farm and a lot of local Austin restaurants source a lot of their vegetables from Paul and Glenn's farm. This is a beautiful kitchen and I think there's some great lessons from this build that you might be able to apply to your kitchen remodel or your new house that you're building. We're back to revisit this kitchen, talk about what things have really worked well for them and even talk a little bit about the science behind a kitchen. So first, let me talk about this beautiful gas range behind me. You know, this is a 1950s gas range that was on the property when Paul and Glenn bought it. And we got it refurbished from a company in Houston that put all new guts in this gas stove. But whether you're cooking with a 1950s gas range or a brand new one, you really need to pay attention to your venting. Remember when you're cooking with gas, you're making fumes that you don't want in your house. So what you see behind me is a custom vent fan. We used a fairly inexpensive 300 CFM insert, wrapped it with some gorgeous stainless and a stainless backsplash. And now we've got a really functional but very old stove. Let's talk about the building science about a kitchen though. Whenever you have a combustion gas going in the kitchen, you need to run that vent fan, but because we've got a very tight envelope in this house, we also had to do makeup air. If you look underneath the range, we raised it up a couple of inches to make it a more comfortable cooking height. And that gave us the ability to put a grill right on the floor Underneath that grill, there's an electronic damper tied with a 24 volt controller to the exhaust fan. And whenever they turn on the hood fan, there's a relay, just a 24 volt relay, which is gonna open a damper and let fresh air in. This would be akin to opening a window. We're doing that near the cooktop so that when the range hood is going, we're gonna let that air from the outside pass through the stove, pick up those noxious gases or smells, and then exhaust out the exhaust fan. Really important to do that with a modern tight house. Next, I wanna talk about the reclaimed pine floors in this kitchen. You know, we were able to find beams from a warehouse that had been taken down in Austin and saw these into a wide plank floor. And I love pine. As pine ages and wears, it gets better and better. And it really gives this new house the look and feel and soul of an old house. The other thing you'll notice in this kitchen, which is very iconic to the farmhouse style, is the wood walls. We used pine one by six did a whitewash finish on it, and they've worn really well. We didn't have to go to the expense of using tile, and we've really got that farmhouse look. Next, I wanna talk about the shop painted cabinets. A white painted, or in this case, we've got some robin's egg blue here, is a very traditional look for a farmhouse, but I'm a big fan of having those painted at the cabinet maker shop. You know, when your cabinet maker paints the cabinets, he's able to do it under ideal and nearly perfect conditions. Whereas if we paint these on the job site, we have a lot of things to deal with. Besides moisture, we're dealing with dust and not so great conditions. And as a result from shop finishing those, you can see five years later, these painted cabinets still look like the day we installed them. The next thing I wanna mention on this kitchen is this sharp drawer microwave. This is such a nice feature, especially as you're considering aging in place in your house. Pop that drawer open, your food is right there at waist level, and it's super easy to take a bowl from the countertop, drop it in the microwave and vice versa. I really like this design. You'll also notice in the area where the microwave is, we've got several windows that are coming right down to countertop height, which means that we didn't have room for wall outlets behind that countertop. So what we did was we used a plug mold right here, right above the microwave, so that we've got good access to plug in those kitchen electrics. But I really like this design idea. It can work with a lot of different styles, more than just farmhouse. The last thing I wanna mention on this house is these gorgeous soapstone countertops. Soapstone is a little bit softer than a, a granite, let's say, or a man-made product, but it's worn really well. It's got a great patina. It cannot be perfect and still look great. Be careful with cast iron pans though. You can see we've chipped this in one or two places by handling pots and pans, but even so that patina that develops over time looks fantastic. And the other thing we did on this was we added a gorgeous wood cutting block. This is an end grain white oak that we had made by a local woodworker. 
And boy, that is right next to that farmhouse style sink. It makes it really easy to chop and cut and prep for a party. The clients have really loved this. Hey, if you want more information on the farm, go to springdalefarmaustin.com. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. We'll see you next time.